let's begin with a circuit. So let's say we have a battery and it's connected across two resistors that are connected parallel to each other. So here we have the positive terminal of the battery and this is the negative terminal. And we're going to use a 12 volt battery and this is going to be a 6 ohm resistor. Let's call it R1 and R2 will be a 4 ohm resistor. Now here's the question for you. Calculate the amount of current that's going to flow away from the battery. Feel free to pause the video and try this problem. Keep in mind this is conventional current which is in the opposite direction of electron flow. So how can we determine the current flowing in a circuit? At this point the current will split off into two directions. The current that flows through resistor 2, we're going to call it I2. And the current that flows through resistor 1, that's going to be I1. The current flowing from the battery is the sum of I1 and I2. So if we could find these individual currents, if we can calculate their value, then we can determine the amount of current emanating from the battery. Now, what we need to use is Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. Now, let's say if we want to find I1, the current flowing through resistor 1. We need the voltage across that resistor and the resistance itself. In a parallel circuit, the voltage across the resistors connected in parallel will be the same. Both resistors are connected across the same 12 volt battery. So V is 12 and R1 is 6. So I1 is simply the voltage of the battery divided by the resistor. So it's 12 divided by 6. So that's the current flowing through R1 is 2 amps. Now let's do the same for the other current, I2. So V is equal to I2 times R2. If we divide both sides by R2, I2 is basically V over R2. So it's going to be 12 volts divided by 4 ohms, which is a, will give us a current of 3 amps. So that is the current that is flowing through the second resistor. So now we can calculate the total current in a circuit. It's I1 plus I2. So that's going to be 2 amps plus 3 amps, which is 5 amps. And so that's the amount of current that is flowing away from the battery. So that's one of the simplest ways in which you could determine the current flowing in a parallel circuit. Now let's work on another example. But this time we're going to have three resistors connected in parallel with respect to each other. But the process for solving this circuit is the same as the other one. So let's name the res excuse me, let's name these resistors first. So we have R1, R2, and R3. Let's say that the battery's voltage for this example is 30 volts. We're going to say that R1 is 5 ohms, R2 6 ohms, and R3 is going to be 10 ohms. So go ahead and calculate the current that is flowing in a circuit from the battery. So we need to calculate I1, I2, and I3. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that V is equal to I1 times R1, but we're going to use this version of that equation. I1 is V over R1, V being 30 volts, R1 is 5 ohms, so 30 divided by 5 that will give us a current of 6 amps. I2 is going to be V over R2. So V is the same. The 30 volt battery is connected across all three resistors. So anytime you have a parallel circuit, the resistors in a parallel circuit all have the same voltage across them. R2 is 6 ohms, 30 divided by 6 is 5. Now for I3, 
Okay, that is a messed up looking 3. Let's do that again. I3 is going to be V over R3. So that's 30 volts divided by 10 ohms. So that's a current of 3 amps. So now that we have the current flowing through each resistor, we can now calculate the current leaving the battery. And that current is basically the sum of these other currents, I1, I2, and I3. So it's 6 plus 5, which is 11, plus 3, which is 14. So the current leaving the battery is equal to 14 amps. So that's a quick and simple way in which you can calculate the current flowing in a parallel circuit. Now let's work on a different type of example. So once again, we're going to have two resistors connected in parallel with respect to each other. And let's say we have a current of 6 amps flowing at this point in a circuit. Let's call this R1 and R2. And let's say that R1 has a value of 5 ohms and R2 has a value of 10 ohms. What is the current that is flowing through resistor 1? So what is I1 in a circuit? Feel free to pause the video and think of a way in which you can calculate I1. You can do it conceptually, or you can actually use a formula to get this answer. But see if you can figure it out. So let's begin. Let's think about it conceptually. Now, R1 has a lower value than R2, which means that I1 should be greater than I2, because as the resistance decreases, the current increases given that the voltage is constant. So notice that R1 is half the value of R2. That means that I1 must be twice the value of I2. And let's call this IT the total current. The total current is the sum of I1 and I2. So replacing I1 with 2I2, we get this. So IT is 6, 2I2 plus 1I2 is 3I2, and then 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I2 is 2 amps, plugging it into this equation, 2 times I2 or 2 times 2, I1 is 4. So that's a quick and simple way to get the answer for this problem. Now, there's a formula that will help you to get that same answer. I1 is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times the total current. So R2 is 10, R1 is 5, and then IT, that's 6. So 10 times 6 is 60, 5 plus 10 is 15, 60 divided by 15 is 4. And so you can see that we have the same answer. So this is a formula that you could use to calculate the current in such a circuit. And once you have this answer, you could subtract these two values to get this answer. 6 minus 4 is 2. Now let's talk about how we can derive the formula that we just use to get the answer. That is the second formula. Now, as we said before, the voltage across two resistors in parallel is the same. So the voltage across R1 is the same as the voltage across R2. And based on Ohm's law, we could say that V1 is I1 times R1, and V2 is I2 times R2. So here's I1, here's I2. And we know that IT is basically I1 plus I2. So solving for I2, we need to move this to the other side. So I2 is IT minus I1. So I'm going to replace I2 with this. 
So I1, R1 is equal to the total current minus the current flowing through resistor 1 times R2. Now let's distribute R2. So I have I1, R1 that's equal to IT times R2 minus I1, R2. Now taking this term, moving it to this side, I have I1, R1 plus I1, R2. That's equal to IT, R2. And now we need to factor the GCF, which is I1. So taking out I1, it's going to be R1 plus R2, which equals IT times R2. And then you could divide both sides by R1 plus R2. And so now we have the equation that we used a few minutes ago. So I1 is going to be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times IT, the total current. So if you have a current that is splitting off into two directions, and you know the resistances of those two pathways, you can calculate the current flowing in each pathway using this circuit. I mean, not circuit, but using that equation.